You can go ahead and start, Uncle Eugene. Okay. Good evening, and welcome to another lecture given by the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Incorporated. First of all, this is a school and not a church, and we're not associated with any church organization, Jehovah Witnesses, or any other denomination that you have taught in the world today. Now, this school was founded in the year of 1931 by Dr. Henry C. Kinley, who had a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh. And the church that you see pictorially illustrated are results of that divine vision and revelation. We have branch schools operating throughout the United States, also schools operating in various countries throughout the world. Now, we'll be explaining the name you see here. Now, Yahweh is the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, which is once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart so that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is up with source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, they have usually inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh now, taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself, is known as Elohim. Now, superincorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, Yahweh Elohim can only be seen in a divine vision and revelation, as stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then when uh, Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the others of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now, remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now, when your translators has come across the true and correct divine title of Yahweh Elohim, they have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim now, manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world, is Joshua the Messiah, as stated in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct original Hebrew name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names, such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh in a superincorporeal shape and form known as the word of the Son is Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations, but one spirit, as stated in 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Now, my investigation on your part will prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title we teach here are true and correct, but that the names and titles that you have taught in the world are false and erroneous. For an example, look up the letter J. It is not and never has been in any part of the Hebrew language. It did not come into existence in any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible renders by Heavenly Father's true name, Yahweh, and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Our aims... The primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate non-explained spirit law or so-called laws of nature and powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and the court science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. 
Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our wife's word is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We'll have prayer by Ms. Miranda Gonzalez. And scripture lesson by Dr. Vanessa Collins. Scripture lesson will be Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. Right, so good evening to everyone. And let us bow our heart and mind for prayer. Our most gracious, long suffering, eternal, Heavenly Father Yahweh, we are indeed thankful and grateful for another opportunity to assemble together with the brethren in a sound mind. We are thankful that you have kept us clothed in a sound mind today and every day, that you woke us this morning and kept us through the day with a focus in on you. We are thankful that you have moved our heart to gather together on this call and to hear, share, and partake of this divine vision and revelation that you have prepared for, for the sons <clears throat> before the foundation of the world. And that you have made us see, know, and understand that you have made us to be recipients of it, of your eternal spirit. We are thankful for every heart that you have moved and we are sincere in our desire that everyone on this call come to a profound knowledge and understanding of you. We ask that you remove any and all of our preconceived ideas and concepts, um, anything that may be a block unto us from hearing your voice, no matter what the speaker, that we do hear your voice and your voice only. These and all blessings we ask in thy son's name, Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Scripture lesson for this evening is Isaiah 63rd chapter. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, Isaiah 63rd chapter. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speaketh in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, mine own arm aided me, and my fear it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger and make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring down their strength to the earth. I will mention the loving kindness of Yahweh and the praises of Yahweh according to all that Yahweh hath bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. For he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them. 
in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. Then his people remembered the ancient days of Moses saying, where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him, that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name, that led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble. As, as a beast goes down into the valley, the spirit of Yahweh caused him to rest. So didst thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength, the yearnings of thy heart and of thy mercies toward me? Are they restrained? Doubtless thou art our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us and Israel acknowledge us not, Thou, O Yahweh, art our Father, our Redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. O Yahweh, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servants' sake, the tribes of thine inheritance. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are become as those over whom thou never bearest rule, over whom thy name has not been called. Isaiah 63rd chapter. All right, hallelujah. Thank you. And for tonight's uh, class, our first speaker for tonight's lecture will be um, Dr. Vanessa Collins. Dr. Collins? Unmute yourself again. All right. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> this is a pleasant surprise. Um, and I am always thankful and grateful unto Yahweh that He has um given me a humble and contrite spirit to come unto Him and to ask him to reveal himself to me in all things. And here lately, um, seeing all of the things that are going on in the world, it is truly a blessing to have a knowledge and understanding of Yahweh. For I can remember all the way back some 46 years now that uh, Yahweh have preached unto us out of the law and the prophets, and he have said that its wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation, where shall is, there's no, when he says shall, that means it's going to happen. So here we are now, and you see that those things are transpiring, because if you don't have a knowledge and understanding of Yahweh, it is no way for you to survive in this day and time. For you see that Yahweh said that Satan would be roaring, up, would be roaring about seeking whom he may devour. And that's what is going on, because this is not about flesh and blood. For the scriptures say flesh and blood shall not, it cannot, inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. So we ain't trying to save no flesh and blood. We're talking about the man's soul being brought back into the spirit of Yahweh in righteousness, in truth. Let's get, um, I think it's 1 Timothy 4th chapter is what I want. First Timothy 4th and 1. Yes. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times 
some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Okay, now, anybody, even people out there in, in the world, they will say, uh, we must be at the end of time. The world must be coming to an end. Here, Yahweh speaking through Timothy says, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. It ain't talking about the people out there in the world that's still in the Roman Catholic churches, in the Baptist churches, in the uh, churches of God in Christ. It talks, it said in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith. Now, in order for you to depart from the faith, you got to be in the faith. Now, there is one faith, one baptism, and one Elohim. So now, if you're not in that, then it's not talking to or about you because it says some shall depart from the faith. That means that you have come to, and then Peter even picks it up over there, said that some will fall and say it would have been better for you not to have come to this at all, that once you have been enlightened, that you turn back to the weak and beggarly things of the world. So we're talking about staying steadfast on a true foundation that Yahweh have laid in not men. And see, and Paul said, though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which have been preached, then you let him be a curse. Because see, Yahweh ain't changing down here in this day and time for nobody. And see, and last night in the basic foundations class, we were looking at the ark, how that when Yahweh told Noah to preach and Noah preached to the four corners of the earth, Yahweh didn't tell Noah to go into the ark. He told Noah to come into the ark. He designated who it was that was going into the ark before the ark was built. So now you see before the foundation of the world, Yahweh had already declared who it is that would have eternal life and that's his son. And if you're not in Yahshua the Messiah, then there is no eternal life for you. Yahweh set those things up before the foundation of the world. He said over there in Isaiah, I declared the end from the beginning. So now if he already set those things in motion, <clears throat> then it would behoove us to get all we can, just like he told Abraham. You look to the north, you look to the south, you look to the east, and you look to the west. As far as the eyes can see, Abraham, that land is yours. So for as much as you can understand about Yahweh, according to him and his righteousness, that is yours, and can't no devil in hell take that from you. Why so? Because Yahweh declared it from the beginning. So you see, when he told Noah to come into the ark, Noah went into the ark. When he sent that raven out and that raven didn't find no rest for his feet, he just kept roaming to and fro, to and fro. And that was indicative of that satanic spirit because Yahweh told him from the beginning that his place would not be found anymore in heaven. And guess what? It, it can't be found. So here we are down here now and Yahweh way is opening up our knowledge, our understanding, so that we can see how that he gave us eternal life before the foundation of the world. Now, you would have some that would argue with that, say they don't believe in predestination. Well, that's your bad, because Yahweh said that he predestined these things. He even said through the Messiah over there, when he was talking to his disciples, he said, I have told you these things before it come to pass. So when it does come to pass, then you will know that it is I that have told you these things. Because you see those disciples, they at one point in time, they followed him. Then, they, then Peter said, look, should we look for another? Look, why are you going to look for something else when Yahweh have made you to know and understand him? 
You see, people start coming up with their own ideas, their own concepts. And then because you, you are greedy and you want to declare something that somebody else hadn't said, then you take that and you run with that. That's not how Yahweh taught us. Yahweh told us over there in John 5 and 39. Look, it is to the law and to the prophets. For over there in John 5 and 39, he, let's read that right quick. Because I don't want to misquote nothing. Because see, Yahweh have been too good to us. He said, ye search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. Now, if the scriptures are the law and the prophets, and if Jesus was correct, then where is your Jesus back there in the law and the prophets? You can't find him because that was not his name. Yahweh said he would give him a name that is above every name. And look, and yes, he have declared unto us to where we can go back there in the law, in the prophets, and we can pick up his Messiah back there in the law, in the prophets. He said, but you will not come to me that you might have life. you rather go to a man and cling on to somebody's imagination, the thoughts of their hearts. Yahweh destroyed the world back there with Noah because he said the thoughts and the intents of the man's heart was only evil continually. And that's where it is down here now. The thoughts and intents of the man's heart is only evil continually. But when Yahweh tell you something and then, that, then that satanic spirit that's occupying that body going to come and try and convince you. No, it ain't that way. That's not what Yahweh told us. Look, he even over there in Deuteronomy 13 chapter, he told him over there, he said, I don't care what it is. He said it can be your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, even your own soul try to entice you to go against the commandments of Yahweh. You be the first one to kill it or to cut it off. And that's where we are down here now. Because if you don't have a sturdy foundation, a true foundation, then yes, you will be carried off with every wind of doctrine. But see, Yahweh have labored with us. And I know here, in the Meridian class from day one, Yahweh have labored with us to make us know and understand that he is and there is none else. I don't care what you look at in your so-called life or in this world. Look, all of those things are because Yahweh has set them so. But you have to discern. And that's what he told us. Look, even one of the aims say you have to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon. Why did he tell you that? Because there is a deception out there. Because some would try to make you doubt Yahweh. But look, why would you doubt Yahweh? You look at Israel back there when they were down there in the land of Egypt. He had already promised Abraham that they would go down into a land that was not theirs. He said, but I'm going to come down and I'm going to bring them up by a mighty hand. And I'm going to give you this land. I'm going to give your seed this land, Abraham. And that's why he told Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, Abraham, that's yours. And so Abraham walked the length and the breadth of Canaan's land. And all of that was for his seed, you understand? And when Ye Abraham didn't even have a seed, when Yahweh gave him that promise. What are you talking about? Because it's not by the will of the flesh or by the will of man, but it's by the promise of Yahweh to whom he will give this eternal life to. And that's what we are coming to now, to make you understand and know Yahweh as he really is and as he actually exists. No, you can't be looking for him up above the sun, moon, and stars and down and it on the outside of you. You better see and know Yahweh right within you for yourself. Even Job said all of those things that he had gone through. He said, I know out of my flesh my Elohim living and I shall see him and that's what you want to see Yahweh out of your flesh not walking around in a physical body but I'm talking about in your spirit which is his that he hath given unto us 
That's where we have to know Yahweh in righteousness and in truth. But you see with Israel, when Yahweh sent Egypt through those 10 devastating plagues down there, Israel felt the first three and then Yahweh caused a separation. Why so? Because Israel, you got to know the powers of Yahweh. So then when Yahweh called them up out of the land of Egypt, they had to take that lamb and they had to examine that lamb and then they had to slay, they had to kill that lamb, pierce him in the side, take the blood, put it on the top of the doorpost, two sides and different from a basin, giving you the four points of blood. What are you talking about? When the true lamb come in, you're going to be able to pick up them same four points of blood. Don't you understand? So now Israel is getting ready. Yahweh told them, you get ready because we're coming up in haste. We ain't going to be lagging around and <coughs> hanging around in Egypt because Yahweh was bringing them up by a mighty hand. So then when they started up out of the land of Egypt, they got the kneading boards on their back. They spoiled the Egyptians. They got the gold and the silver and the fine linen. What are you doing all of that for? Because Yahweh have instructed them. So now they're coming on to the Red Sea. And you see you got the Red Sea in front of them. You got warring nations in the mountains on either side. And then this Pharaoh, now he's changed his mind again. And they cost the Egyptians saying, who got to build our treasure houses for us now that you've let the Egyptians go? So then here, Pharaoh starts out in high pursuit of Israel to bring them back into that bondage. But Yahweh didn't say they were going to be in bondage always. He told Abraham, for a period of 400 years after which time I will come in and I will deliver them. So Yahweh is making good on that promise that he gave unto Abraham. Him. So now they coming on through. They Yahweh caused the east wind to blow that drown ground dry, and Israel come on across there on dry land. They get out there in the wilderness, and now they turn and they start looking at this same Moses that they were crying to before, and they told him, Moses, you have brought us up so that we can be our wives and our children can be a prey unto these warring nations. And what did Moses do? Moses had to turn to his minister, Oshia, that was right there with him. And I'm telling you, when you find yourself in a situation, you better turn to your minister that's right there with you. And that minister is Joshua the Messiah. They have been made unto us righteousness, redemption, and sanctification. He said that he was the comforter, the Holy Spirit, that will bring all things back to our members, whatsoever Yahweh have said unto us. And that's what he's doing now. But look, if the truth hadn't been told you, then why are you going to bring a lie back to your remembrance? Yahweh said he would give us pastors after his own heart that will feed us with knowledge and understanding. Don't you see? And that's what he's doing down here now. And that's the only way you can know and embrace the fact that you are Yahweh and you can't be nothing else but that. There was no other source and substance for you to come from. And just like that pure spirit manifested as Elohim and just became each day of the creation and how he later manifested as Joshua the Messiah to take away the sin of the whole world. That same Yahweh manifested as you and I. You understand? See, you call me Vanessa, but guess what? I am a mother of three. Don't you understand? I am a sister. I am a daughter. I am a niece. Look, all of those things, but I am the one person. Don't you understand? So all of these things, Yahweh just broke himself down and he called it whatever it is called. You understand? But in the finality of it, it is all going back unto Yahweh, except for that son of perdition that he said had no place no more. You understand? And look, and that's what we have to hold on to, the truth as Yahweh has given it unto us. And look, though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that that have already been preached, then you let him be a curse, you understand? Because see, 
We are down here at the end of this thing. And you cannot afford to allow that adversary to come in and deceive you and take that eternal life, that precious life, that gift that Yahweh has given unto us. He told Abraham, look, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeded great reward. And look, and he made Abraham rich. But then again, he told him all that you can see it is yours so i'm telling you all that you can understand of yahweh your elohim it is yours and can't nothing or nobody take that from you look don't you be as isaiah states over there how that the south is wallowing in her own mouth look don't you turn back into the weak and beggarly things of the world and you look at the man over there in luke that had the sons and you see how that that son he wanted his substance and he took his substance and he went off into a far land he went off from his father and then when he had spent his substance then he began to eat with the pigs and the cattle out there. And when he came to himself, he said, my father have plenty. Let me go back unto my father. You better hope Yahweh's arm is still stretched out when you come to yourself and you decide you want to do those things that are right and pleasing in Yahweh's sight. When you decide, or so you think you have decided that you want this knowledge and understanding, the only way you can have this is that Yahweh is the one that give it unto you. Look, we ain't doing nothing of ourselves. That is Yahweh. For he said, look, shall not the powder look of the same law make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor he said look we didn't come into this of our own that's why you cannot work upon your salvation it is a free gift from Yahweh but look the work that you have to do is to believe him to accept him he said over there in John for as many as received him to them gave he the power to become the sons of Yahweh and that's the only way you can be a son is that Yahweh has already given that unto you look we ain't doing this on our own he said over there in Isaiah that he planned a garden and he hoped that it was a fruit but then it kept grew, grew wild branches in it you understand where did that come from that adversary come in there and sow those lives that's what he's talking about over there in those parables when he talks about the sower and the seed some fell on shallow ground some fell on good grounds you understand but look you think you have comprehended all of the breath and the depth of your Yahweh. And look, and that adversary got you fooled thinking that you know something. And look, Paul said, we all have knowledge, but not as we ought to have. But look, you ought to have a profound knowledge and understanding of Yahweh because that's the only way we're going to come out of this. That was the only way Israel came up out of the land of Egypt. But look, you look at when they got out there. Now just think when they were down in the land of Egypt, they had all of the cattle and all of that. So now they're on the way. They had corn. They had the meal. They had the kneading boards on their back. So why was it when they got out there in the wilderness that they started crying for food? Why didn't they think to go back and make bread like they were doing down in the land of Egypt? Look, they, they had a Passover supper. Don't you understand? For they killed a lamb and they had to consume that lamb. They had unleavened bread and they had bitter herb wine. They had that down in the land of Egypt. So why didn't it come into their heart and mind that when they got over there? Because Yahweh is showing that this is not by man. As he said through uh, the Messiah over there, he said, you say that man 
don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed and come forth from the mouth of Yahweh. That's how we live by the word of Yahweh, not by what you put into this natural physical body. That thought couldn't enter Israel because Yahweh didn't allow it because they would know that he was the one that was providing for them. And look, when he took Moses up into the mount, and he revealed him, he showed him himself up there. He transfigured into Elohim and just became each day of the creation. Moses was looking at those things as they unfolded. And then you had those 73 people that were on the plateau of the mount. Went on back down into the camp. And then you see Aaron told them to strip themselves of their gold and their silver. And then he said he cast it in the fire and just out popped this golden calf. Look, you would take this precious knowledge and understand it that Yahweh gave you and you will mix it with your carnal mind and then out pop this golden calf. So don't you be surprised when Yahweh calls it to be screwed up and then you have to eat and drink of it and you have to swallow that ignorance that you have put out there. But look, he said, you better be careful what you sow because just what you sow, that's what you're going to reap. You're going to bring it back to yourself. So you better be careful how you build on this foundation that Yahweh has given unto us for he built this upon that solid rock which was Yahshua the Messiah we ain't playing with concepts ideas and opinions down here because you think you got to tell somebody something you want to be over something or somebody you think you're smarter than that. and look this ain't about that this is the unadulterated truth of Yahweh our Elohim this is what he has presented unto us. And as he stated, look, if you can't go back there and prove it by the law and the prophets, then it's best for you to leave it alone. That's why he said over there in Proverbs, they ain't going to be line upon line, precept upon precept. Look, <coughs> that's how Yahweh is feeding us. And even over there in Paul, when Paul talks about, now, there was a time when he fed us with milk and not with strong meat. But look, now you are a man and you're supposed to be able to digest this that Yahweh is feeding unto us. We ain't playing games down here now. It's time for us to go home. And I'm ready to go home. Look, Yahweh have given us of himself. In his pure, unadulterated state, Yahweh have poured out this knowledge and understanding unto us. This is not of a man. Look, Carl West of Boston came to Meridian in 1974 and started preaching this gospel unto us. And it has not changed in 46 years. Now you tell me that there's a gospel or there's a doctrine out there in the world that they are preaching that has been consistent with the things that they started out with in your church world out there. Look, they got a thing called excommunicate. Now, if Yahweh give you eternal life, how can a man take that from you? He can't take what Yahweh has given you if it is the truth. And I'm telling you, Yahweh have preached the unadulterated truth unto us. And look, I have gone through many battles these 46 years. When I first had my encounter, we went to Birmingham. I was so, so excited when we went to Birmingham. Carl sit on his doorsteps at my mama's house and he preached unto us. A few months later, we drove to Birmingham. They preached the same thing unto us. We went to Washington, D.C., to the 75 Convention. They were preaching the same thing unto us. Then we got there, went to the 77, I think it was 77 Chattanooga. They started to change. They was looking at flesh and blood. They were talking about how Dr. Kennedy told them they wouldn't die out the flesh. 
Yahweh didn't tell us we wouldn't die to these physical bodies. And when he said you wouldn't die to the flesh, then why didn't you equate that with your carnal mind? And you start preaching your doctor. You wanted them, to, you wanted men to follow you. You wanted your big congregation. That was not the truth that Yahweh had given unto us. For he said eternal life is to know that thou only art the true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah whom thou hast sent. So he didn't say H.C. Kenley was our savior. H.C. Kenley himself said he was not our savior. So now you want to get down here in the end of this thing, and then you want to start talking about, well, H.C. Kenley was our savior. No, he was not our savior. Yahweh is our savior as Yahshua the Messiah, as he stated. That's what Yahshua means. Yahweh is salvation. So why you want to take these things and then you want to start drumming up your imagination? Look, Yahweh told us, don't you add nothing to it and don't you take nothing from what he has given unto us. And I'm just fool enough to believe that's what Yahweh meant when he said it. Now I'm going to cut it off here and I certainly hope that you have gotten something out of what was said and like I stated from the beginning, I am so thankful unto Yahweh my Elohim for the knowledge and understanding that he has given me, that he is able and he will and has kept me grounded in the knowledge of the truth, not allow me to be dragged off or taken snare. Because you see, even with Israel down there in the land of Egypt, when, when every Yahweh was pouring out the plagues and then, and then Moses they, Pharaoh would send for Moses and Moses would go to him to see what he wanted. Go and entreat to Yahweh for me this one more time and I'll let Israel go. And then when Moses said, well, when do you want to take this plague off? And Pharaoh said, tomorrow. Look, don't you know if you're in anguish of spirit, if you're going through some mental anguish and you're suffering, hell, you don't want it to be, you don't want to put it off until tomorrow. You don't want to prolong that state. You want Yahweh to end it for you right now. You don't want to keep going through those things. And now you have to see Yahweh. And that's why he said, look, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahweh, and you are not your own. Look, we don't own these bodies, <clears throat> but it will behoove each and every one of us every day, all day long, to thank Yahweh for the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. For He, it, this is a true blessing to be able, able to understand and comprehend the breadth and the depth of Yahweh our Elohim in this great knowledge and understanding. Now, again, I hope you've gotten something out of what I said, and thank you, and may Yahweh bless you. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Collins. We're going to keep on moving right along. Our next speaker for tonight's lecture will be Dr. Anik Cooley. Anik, could you can unmute yourself for me? Good evening, class. Good evening. Uh, I have definitely enjoyed the, um, the previous speaker. And um, I, too, am extremely thankful and grateful Anytime I have <clears throat> the opportunity to express the things that Yahweh is continuing to show me right within and uh, continuing to show me from without through the brethren, through other forms of him just truly showing that he is the all in all. Um, so I actually, he just <clears throat> allowed me to uh, get myself out of the way, if you will, so that he can uh, share some of those things. Uh, as the previous speaker kind of touched on, you know, the fact that Yahweh has all of these things going on physically in the world at this time. <clears throat> it is truly showing 
where he is taking all of this from a physical standpoint. And if we're putting that on the pattern that he so graciously given unto us and revealed unto us of how we can put these physical things that we go through and that we are experiencing on the pattern, then we truly do see as the previous speaker was saying that we are, we are truly at the end of this thing. Um, For something like a virus such as uh, COVID-19 to not have a sense of smell, um, there's no way that we can reach out and touch it, we can't grab it, uh, it's spirit. So when we truly look at that and the fact that when you look up the word COVID, king, <clears throat> a crown or corona, which which means crown, is, is some of the terms that, that you would get from that definition. <clears throat> and what Yahweh has been showing me from that alone is the fact that he is the one that is truly in control. And all in all truly points to that. So when we, so when when the moderator get, gets up on the floor and he and he starts to express these things, <clears throat> it's beautiful every single time it's done. And uh, <clears throat> the word repetition has definitely been coming up a lot uh, for me personally, and so thankful for the brethren <clears throat> in our class because. <clears throat> Yahweh has allowed for this thing to stay straight, at least, you know, right amongst ourselves, if you will. I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Um, <clears throat> because it's important that it stays straight. It's important that these things truly line up, line upon line, and precept upon precept. Not only for the, for the fact of keeping it straight, but also so that as others are coming to a knowledge and understanding of what's being shown unto them and what Yahweh is revealing unto them, then what they're receiving through class, through these videos, through these calls, um, is edifying right within themselves. It's reassuring, it's, uh, it's confirming, uh, and it helps to strengthen that foundation. Uh, very grateful for the basics and foundation call on Thursdays. Um, if you if you're not tuning into those and or you have others, um, sometimes I just try and go and be around people that don't normally uh, attend class or want to you know listen in on the calls, and I'll just play them on the loudspeaker or something. You know, uh, just because these things can strike a chord and and, and truly make you say, okay. Um, okay, if this is a basis and foundations class and, and they are truly walking me through, you know, chapters in the Bible, verse for verse, um, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't get any plainer or simpler than that when it comes to a school. <clears throat> and we say that this is a school, this isn't a church or any religious organization or anything else of that magnitude. So when you come to school, it's important that you are attentive to the true teacher, not the person that you're viewing as, as the speaker, uh, because they aren't doing anything of themselves and of their free will. <clears throat> My baby will wake up, excuse me, y'all. Um, <clears throat> let me make sure somebody got her. Give me just a moment. All right, 
It's okay. Calm down. You hungry? Okay, go eat your food. Go in there. Go eat your food. Come on. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> okay, my apologies. So basically just getting to getting to a place of, of where we truly appreciate this gospel. We truly appreciate the calls that Yahweh is setting up weekly for us to uh, participate in, learn from, uh, and, and truly get into, into some of these things um, that are being expressed. So if we start um, just by looking at the first name of the, of the school, which is re repetitiously repeated. But Yahweh had me truly looking at each of these aims of the school, um, because that's one of the first things that you do if you go to college, for instance. Um, you, go on, you go into the class on the first day, the teacher gives you a syllabus with the goals or the aims of the class. And he expects you to not only review those aims, and to understand what you're supposed to be obtaining or receiving from the class throughout the course of the class. Um, but it's so that you have a well-rounded understanding of exactly what you are to learn, what you are to comprehend and what you are to consume in terms of uh, the knowledge that is going to be poured out through the teacher. <clears throat> So if you guys could, uh, if, if uh, one of the readers could get from me, John 4, 24, please. John 4, 24. For Yahweh is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay. So John 4, 24 says, Yahweh is spirit. And in the King James Version, it says, Yahweh, oh God is a spirit. But we know that there is only one spirit in operation in all things. Oh, oh, Father, help me. Okay, oh, okay, okay. So it says that Yahweh is spirit. Y'all bear with me with my baby. I'm sorry. It says that Yahweh is spirit, and those that were and they that worship Him, and that's what we do in everything that we do, in every in every. <sighs> okay, in every form of fashion. That's what we do. Everything that we do points back to Yahweh. It, it worships him. It praises him. It, uh, it gives him truly the glory because without him, we can do nothing. It says we live, move, and have our being right within him. And it's because of him that we're even moving because he's the one that's doing all the operating internally as well. Like it's always said from the floor. Um, like it's always said from the floor. Uh, you can't breathe on your own. You're not, you're not conscious of how many times you're breathing. Your lungs are, are um, inhaling and exhaling oxygen. Your heart pumps blood. You're not in control of that. We're not in control of that, right? So if we're truly not in control of that, if we're not in control of that, then that, then that, that in and of itself, Nick, I think we lost you. We can't hardly hear you. Very, very faint. So 
know, the other piece to that verse was the fact that they that worship him must worship him in and in truth. Is that right? There you go. So worshiping, worshiping him in spirit means that you got to know what spirit is. And of course, that's a little more detail. I won't go. I won't go in that direction. But knowing what spirit is and what truth is, because it either is or it isn't as it pertains to the spirit. So that in and of itself, you know, Yahweh has just truly been. Uh, taking me to a place of, of truly grasping the concept of what it means to truly know him as he really is and as he actually exists. And I, and I know that that in and of itself is why that's one of the first aims of the school is to help us to find and know Yahweh as he really is and as he actually exists. Because once we know where he is, which is right within us and in everything that we see, everything that we see, touch, smell, anything that's around you, anything that is materialized is just spirit because that's what matter is, spirit materialized. And there's a repetition that Yahweh has in the pattern of his creation, in the pattern of, of his purpose and plan that he so graciously laid out to us in his charts uh, through, through Dr. Kinley. Uh, all of the pamphlets, all of the transcripts, all of these things that Yahweh has poured out unto the brethren, unto his sons. Um, uh, folks, we got we got a lot to be thankful for. We truly have a lot to be thankful for. And it's not by happenstance that each and every one of us is not, not so much about being on the call, because even if you listen to the calls after the call, it still has relevance in the moment in which you say, I'm in class, because either you're in class or you're not in class. Honestly, at this point, we should always be in class because the state and condition of, that this world is in, it's not getting any better. That's very obvious. And what and what's what what what's happening and what what Yahweh is truly showing about the creation itself is the fact that the ones that seemingly have power, they don't have power. They're not the ones that's truly on the throne of power when it when you're speaking from the standpoint of of really being able to make something happen. All of this is still going according to Yahweh's will. Definitely. Get for me, um, I think it's 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 3, let's start about the 15th verse. That Corinthians 3.15, but even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts. Nevertheless, when they shall turn to Yahweh, the veil shall be taken away. Now, pause right there, speaker. And it says, but even unto this day, and this day is relevant any day that we read this. But it says, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. And nevertheless, when it shall turn to Yahweh, the veil shall be taken away. So we know we have to turn aside to see, just as is always pointed out about Moses being at that burning bush. We have to turn aside to see. And that's not from a physical standpoint in looking at a physically burning bush. We're talking about right within ourselves, right within your conscious is where, it had, where you have to be cleaned up, folks. We have to be. It's, we, we don't have a choice about it. it it's, not, it's, it's truly not up to us. Because what we're experiencing at this point is the fact that Yahweh has us to the point now where we have to stay at home. We have to be alone and by ourselves. We have to, we have to truly get to a place where this creation is of no relevance 
when it comes to the things of this life, this physical life. Um, and that's just, that's just truly where you have to come. That's, that's all a part of that dying off um, and, and not living according to flesh and blood, but after the spirit uh, that the Bible talks about in, in, in several, different, uh, several different places. Uh, continue reading there, speak. I mean, reader, sorry about that. 17th verse, now Yahweh is spirit. And where the spirit of Yahweh is, there is liberty. Pause right there. And I say Yahweh is spirit. Once again, Yahweh is that spirit, if you will. And where the spirit of Yahweh is, there is liberty or freedom. That's the only way that we can truly be free mentally and spiritually from the things of this world, the things that we are experiencing. Just like the previous speaker was saying, I mean, just over the span of however many years she has been on this earth plane, she has experienced some things. Yahweh has taken her through some things and I can truly attest to that within myself. And I know each and every one of us can because it was necessary. It ain't that, you know, oh, some of us are more fortunate than others. No, whatever role Yahweh has you playing in his story or his movie, it's all going, it's all going according to his script. Keep reading. But as, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of Yahweh are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of Yahweh. So ultimately what this last verse is basically showing unto us we get a knowledge and understanding of the previous verses and what they're sharing, then ultimately, all in all, we are to be changed into the exact same thing, if you will, that he is, right? So it says, basically, according to his glory, is how we are changed from glory to glory into the exact same image. Now, we are already made in his likeness and image, all we're doing at this point is coming back to a knowledge and understanding of that right within ourselves. That's that veil that the 16th verse is talking about. That veil has to be removed. That's that ignorance that we talk about, um, that every single man is born into this world uh, inundated in. And so when you, when you truly come to a knowledge and understanding of how Yahweh has this thing set up and how that if every person comes into the world ignorant of his existence right within them, then that's what we're truly fighting the good fight to go back to, to get back to, to stay and remain at, as the previous speaker was saying. Um, because that's the only, that's our only source of hope, folks. That's our only source, source true source of peace in this life. That's the only way that we can get it. That's the only way that we can have it. And that's truly the only way that we can keep it. It's holding fast to those things that Yahweh has expressed and shown unto us um, of himself. And uh, I'm going to I'm 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 pause here, I'm gonna cut out here. But uh, as I mentioned before, you know, I, I, I'm truly thankful to Yahweh. Uh, for, for all that he is doing uh, right within us, moving us all to continue to stay steadfast on these calls um, and, and trying to remain in that, uh, in that arc of safety um, whilst we learn more and more about him and whilst he continues to reveal these things unto us. I just wanted to uh, take this moment to impress upon the brother and to continue to strive and to fight for that. Don't lose hope, don't get weary in well-doing uh, because it's all a part of what we are supposed to experience here. Um, and Yahweh never said that it would be easier just because we come into a knowledge and understanding of him. So if that's, if that's the case, then more than likely we'll, we'll probably feel 
if you will, we'll feel a lot more of what we go through just because our eyes have truly been open. Not only can we see and understand why we're going through these things, and Yahweh is, is showing us these things, but we can also have a, a better uh, um, a better appreciation for them at the end of the day because we know we can take these things, and as I mentioned earlier, you know we can place these things on the pattern to always know where we are in the midst of. With these few words, I, I truly hope that uh, someone has, has received something that, that sparks that, that fire within to, to want to turn aside and, and truly see Yahweh and uh, hold fast to the things that Yahweh is allowing us to partake in because the world don't have it. The world truly does not have this. If they did, they would not be as torn up by COVID or any other things that might be going on, you know, in this in this world. Um, so I'm just thankful continuously. I'm thankful daily. Uh, and I'm thankful for the repetition of it all. So if I, I guess if I would have to give us a key word for this evening, it would definitely be repetition. Um, because Yahweh repeats these things and the repetition allows it to sink in to the foundation of what we're supposed to know that much deeper um, as we continue to repeat them. Um, so just I just want to admonish the brethren to, to remain steadfast in your obedience to Yahweh, uh, your patience in uh, the trials and tribulations that we will all still face uh, as Yahweh continues to take his to take this creation out um, and we go home. Uh, so with these few words, I uh, I'll say hallelujah. All right, hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Cooley. All right, for our next speaker for tonight's lecture will be Dr. Shirley Cole. Dr. Cole, you can unmute yourself, please. Oh, yeah. Good evening. And I truly evening. have enjoyed the words of Yahweh. Oh, and so many things that I uh, touched on that sparked something in my uh, soul to um, on the things that Yahweh has me looking at recently. Uh, the first thing, um, as the Holy Spirit was mentioning through the first speaker about these things have, have to be revealed. Um, and it's by the mercy and grace of Yahweh that he has made us meet or suitable to receive the things that he has already purposed for us, um, that he has already purposed to reveal unto us. And also, um, it was mentioned um, by the second speaker as she got off the call, call about the foundation. Those are things that Yahweh's had me meditating on recently. And the foundation is the most, is necessary. Uh, because without a foundation, then... Um, there can be no standing, you know, that um, that is built upon, that, that the Yahweh has given you to build your faith upon cannot stand without a sure foundation. And Yahshua Messiah himself uh, is the foundation that Yahweh um, manifested as uh, to give us or to build upon, to use to build upon, which is the truth itself. The first aim is very powerful as just was spoken to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and as he actually exists. That first aim is so powerful because 
eternal life is to know. Uh, and as the first speaker mentioned about uh, wisdom and knowledge being the stability of our times. Now, wisdom is the application of knowledge. Knowledge of what? Questions have to be asked and answered when we read these things. We don't just read them and just go on by them and not look at the words. So knowledge of what? Knowledge of Yahweh, uh, John 17 and three. Eternal life is to know, this is the Messiah, said that eternal life is to know that thou only Yahweh art the true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah whom thou hast sent. Thou art the true Elohim. Thou art the truth that you have sent into the world for your sons whom you have purpose to receive. So that's why that first aim is so powerful because the same one that spoke the words in John 17 and the three is the same one, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, that, that uh, gave us the first aim to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. Now, how is he really? And how does he actually exist? Yahweh is spirit. And we're talking about building the foundation. You must know that Yahweh is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and how he actually exists. If he is spirit, then how does he actually exist? Where does he exist? First of all, you got to realize uh, to knock out the lie that the adversary has, has come with, to us with that you cannot know Yahweh in his pure spirit state. He actually exists. He is pure. If he's spirit, what kind of spirit do you think he is? He is pure, pure spirit. So you can know Yahweh in his pure spirit state. That's what the first aim is about, to find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. Pure means free from anything that adulterates, that taints, free from defects, faultless, you know, um, being that and nothing and no other. That's what Yahweh is. And if the first thing said that we, that we are to find and know him, is it really and that is that means that we can know him in his pure spirit state. Now, Yahweh has made us suitable to receive or made us meet to be partakers of the truth. That means that nothing can come in we're still talking about a foundation. That means nothing can come in to move us from the truth. And the truth is that Yahweh is pure spirit. Now, the foundation has to be sure. So when anything comes up, you have to make sure it's for you to examine. <laughs> It's for you to examine and to make sure that it's firm, that it's sure, that it's unmovable. That's why all of these things come up. They're not about what we think they're about. As far as us thinking that, oh, it's about so-and-so saying this. It's about this school saying that, this school teaching that. No, stay at home. It's for you to make sure that your foundation is sure. Now, Yahweh told us to go to the law and to the prophets. If they go any other way, there is no understanding or light in them. So we must, that's how we build a foundation. Now we're talking about examining your foundation to make sure that it's sure. So that's why Moses 
when he told Moses the vision that he gave Moses to examine the lamb before they could come up out of Egypt, he told them to offer up a lamb and that the lamb must be without spot and blemish. Then the lamb, uh, let's go and get that right quick. Exodus, the 12th chapter. He said, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You should take it out from the sheep or from the goats. It shall be without blemish. Now, in order for them to know that it was without blemish, they had to examine it. Right? So examine means to inspect or scrutinize carefully to observe or to test or to investigate to make sure that your foundation is sure to make sure that 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 you're offering up unto Yahweh is that that he is without spot and blemish so that your foundation can be made sure now, this is what he's been having me looking at recently about examining the lamb. Now, the lamb, you know, we know that it's talking about Yahshua, the Messiah, because he was a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. That Yahweh manifested as, and it said in the scripture lesson, he was our savior. He was the sacrifice for Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. That was the sacrifice. And then you go back there with um, uh, after the lamb was offered up and they came out of Egypt, they had to inspect it and make sure it was without spot and blemish. And they had to have the lamb in them before they could come up out of Egypt. And they did come up out of Egypt after they partook of the lamb, after they followed the instructions, specifically as Yahweh had instructed concerning that lamb that was offered up. And uh, then um, Yahweh gave a promise to Abraham and told him that, in, that he would give him a seed and in his seed, all nations of the earth would be blessed. Then Yahweh kind of turned around and told Abraham to offer up his only begotten son. And Abraham obeyed and did that. And um, when he did that, it was Yahweh that had already prepared a lamb instead of the sacrifice, instead of Abraham offering up his son, Yahweh uh, prepared the sacrifice. Yahweh himself was the, sac the sacrifice or the lamb for the burnt offering that was to be offered up. But well, what I'm really trying to get to is examining the lamb. These points here that we just read and that I just mentioned, it's more to it than that. These are the things that Yahweh gave us to teach us, to, uh, to teach us spiritual things. But we have to go to see these things, uh, Romans 1, 19 and 20, that, that may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has shown it unto them. But in order to build the foundation, we have to go and see the things that Yahweh laid down. And it was for the Messiah to come in, because the Messiah, being the lamb that was offered up, had to come in to fulfill all of these things to show that he was the lamb. And when John saw uh, the Messiah coming over in John 129, he said, behold, the lamb of Yahweh, which come to take away the sins of the world. Talking him about him being the lamb that was uh, slain before the foundation of the world to take away sin. Now, uh, Exodus 12 and 5 was talking about the lamb being offered up. And then um, you go into Leviticus and you'll see it's talking about the sacrifices that are, be, are to be offered up. Um, and 
why are they offering why were they offering up sacrifices in the first place? We go to Genesis the third chapter to see why they needed a savior and why they had to offer up sacrifices unto Yahweh. Now sacrifice means a surrender or destruction of something prized or desirable. The surrender or destruction of something prized or desirable for the sake of something considered as having a higher or more pressing claim. You surrender, the surrender or destruction of something that you prize or that's desirable to you. Now what's more prized and desirable to us than us ourselves, even though we may prize other things, other physical things, but us ourselves is what we try to hold on to and to make something and to be desirable of. And as the uh, speaker was just saying about that, they all have to be taken away, which is a calm mind in order for you to see um, the truth of the matter. So what Yahweh desires as far as us offering up sacrifices unto him, there was a physical lamb down there with Moses. And then they had to offer sacrifices all the way up, you know, all the while they were out in the wilderness and everything, right? So there came a point where Yahweh started um, showing the, the truth of the matter and, or expounding unto us what sacrifice that he truly desired. And the bottom line is, uh, let's get, uh, first let's go get, um, Hosea, um, let's go get uh, Isaiah 1 and 11 first. Let's talk, what I'm trying to show is hopefully um, how you can be, make sure your foundation is sure. Isaiah 1, 11. Mm -hmm. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith Yahweh? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. But what do you mean, Yahweh? That's what you told us. That's what you commanded uh, the children of Israel to do to do these things. So what are you talking about now, Yahweh? Read. When ye come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. It That's is... Right. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Okay, let's um, go down to the 16th verse. Wash ye, make ye clean. Put no, keep going. I'm sorry, keep going at the 14th verse. Okay, your new moons and your appointed feast, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread, spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. So when we spread our hands, when we spread our hands unto Yahweh, he's going to hide his eyes from you because we think we can offer up the sacrifice of our lips and that, that that's pleasing unto Yahweh. Um, but that's not what he desires either. When you make many prayers, oh, Yahweh, please help me. Please do this for me. Give me this. Give me a job. Give me a house. Give me a car. You know, uh, all these prayers we offer up unto him. And our hands are full, and your hands are full of blood. What do you mean, hands full of blood? I ain't killed nobody. Well, you're looking at the wrong killing. Okay, read. Wash ye, make ye clean. 
Now Girl. this is what Yahweh's this is what Yahweh desires. Wash ye, make you clean. Right, read. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Cease to do evil. That's the well, I, don't, I don't I don't do evil, Yahweh. I don't kill anybody. I hadn't robbed any banks. I hadn't done this and done that. See, these are the things you have to examine. The, these are things, this is why you have to examine your foundation or that truth that you say that you have. That you have. The Holy Spirit is in me. That needs to be examined. That lamb that you say is in you, which is talking about the Holy Spirit, you need to examine that. Whether you have put your thoughts on it about what you think it is. And see, that's what messes up the whole thing in the first place. Mm -hmm. Put your thoughts on it. Yahweh said your thoughts are not my thoughts, but we want to put our thoughts on it, on what's pleasing unto Yahweh. That's not how this works. So he said, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Stop lying. Stop trying to deceive. Stop trying to be a person, just be Yahweh. If you say that just what you are, saying it is so much different than being it. Wash ye, make you clean. Hosea 14, 1 and 2. Hosea 14, 1 and 2. O Israel, Return unto Yahweh thy Elohim, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to Yahweh. Say mm -hmm. unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips. That's right. Now you will render the calves of your lips by by your actions or by mm -hmm. you taking away the evil from your hearts, removing the evil from your hearts. See, you speaking to speaking the thing, uh, it was over there somewhere where Yahweh said, you do honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. That's why he said, wash you, make you clean. Return unto Yahweh by the offering of the fruit of thy lips. Which it means that when you offer the fruit of your lips unto Yahweh, he's going to expect some action. You have to know, and I've told, I told this many of times, how that I was so thankful that Yahweh showed me that I want to be tried on every word that comes out of my mouth, and I want to be conscious of that. Now, the problem comes in that is that when you speak a thing, when you offer up the fruit of your lips unto Yahweh, if you're not conscious of the fact that you're going to be tried on every word, then you're going to find yourself going through something over and over and over again because you're not even conscious of that's what's happening. You don't stop to examine the lamb. You don't stop to look at if there is any spot or any blemishes. Because the word of Yahweh is pure. There are no spots and blemishes in Yahweh's commandment. It's pure because he is pure. So when you walk around here saying you are Yahweh, you got to examine that thing. You, got to, you can't just be offering up the fruit of your lips. It has to be examined. You have to be real with it. This is not a plaything where we can just offer up words unto Yahweh and think he's, he's going to be pleased with it. And Yahweh is not far off from you that he doesn't know your thoughts and that he doesn't see what you're doing. You may not be worried about what a man thinks about what you're doing. But if you're conscious that it's Yahweh in you, 
right there in you, seeing what you're doing. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, he's got you doing it, the scripture lesson, but he's got you doing it for a reason. Scripture lesson, the 63rd chapter, something stood out where he said, um, in the 17th verse, O Yahweh, why hast, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servant's sake, the tribes of thine inheritance. So when you find yourself just gallivanting around and not conscious of what you're doing, why you're doing it, what Yahweh has going on, and that he's just out of the picture and you find yourself just doing whatever you want, wherever, whatever your thoughts lead to you, because you're not stopping examining anything as far as your foundation is concerned. That you say is in you, which is the truth. So this, so why are you offering in why are you offering up to Yah? What are you offering up to Yahweh, and why are you offering it up? Because He desires that you offer up your carnal mind, that you offer up yourself, which has to be gotten rid of. The carnal mind is an enmity against Yahweh. It's not subject to the law of Yahweh. Neither, indeed, can it be. So it must be offered up. It's your prized possession. It's desirable. But you have to surrender it for destruction. For the sake of something considered as having a higher or more pressing claim. Eternal life is pressing. That's a higher and pressing claim. That's what you ought to be offering up. And it's pleasing unto Yahweh. When Noah and them came out of the ark, the first thing they did was offer it up. He did was offer up sacrifice unto Yahweh. And it says that um, it was pleasing unto Yahweh that he did that. That's what he desires, for you to offer up sacrifices unto him. But remember over in Isaiah, what we just read, he don't desire your offering up of your bullocks, you know, or you putting your flesh up in his face. No, he talking about you got to get rid of that. You got to surrender that. You got to offer that that's up, a, that's a sweet smelling savor under his nostrils, which is holy, which is pure, which is clean, which is undefiled. That means you have to get rid of your carnal mind and be pure as he is pure. And that is possible. But we're not talking about you as a man being pure. We're talking about the new man, which is, which is renewed in knowledge. That's what's pure. That's what's clean. That's Yahweh. When you say you're Yahweh, examine it. If there's any spots and blemishes there, you better back up a little bit and say, Yahweh, okay, show me what it is that how I need to make me clean. Give me a clean heart. That's the prayer you pray unto Yahweh. Give me a clean heart so that I may serve you in spirit and in truth, because that's the father seeketh such to worship him. If he seeketh such to worship him, you should be daily examining the spots for spots and blemishes. Daily doing that. Instead of getting your mind all in the gutter all of the time, worried about physical, being concerned about physical things and people and relationships and all this stuff that the adversary uses to distract you, to make you not notice the spots and blemishes.
it's time. We keep saying it's time to go home. But as the angel told Lot when they were coming out, we can't do nothing until you come out. We are in all in this together. And the sooner that we're all made clean, And we ain't going nowhere until then. How long do we have to wait on each other? <laughs> I don't want to just put it off. I'm talking about all of us. Examine the lamb without spot and blemish. That's, they couldn't come up out of Egypt until then, until they partook of the lamb. And it had to be without spot and blemish. Lot couldn't come up. The angels couldn't, couldn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah until Lot, until you come out, Lot. Come on. You can't be waiting on nobody else, your son. You can't be waiting on nobody else. Husband, mama, daddy, children, riches. Come out of her, my people. That's what Yahweh desires of us, to surrender for destruction the things that are desirable unto us, that are holding us back. Dr. Cole, you have five more minutes. Okay. Um, okay, I want to finish it up with, um, you reconcile, in order to reconcile all things to Yahweh, it has to be examined that my job was reconciling um, the general ledger accounts. You got debits and credits. And you got every month I have a bunch of debits and credits that I have to bring together. But I have to look at every single debit and credit. I have to examine it to see if it fits in that total that I'm trying to reconcile to. I can't just start throwing debits and credits together. You know, I'm not going to come up with the reconciling total that I'm trying to reconcile to. I have to make sure I examine it to see what was that entry? What was that entry? And does it fit here? Or does it fit? If it doesn't fit, I can't put it in there to be reconciled. If it does fit, then of course I put it in there to be reconciled until I come up to the, to a zero difference to reconcile to that total. In order to be reconciled unto Yahweh, you have to examine the truth that you say you have received to make sure that it is an unadulterated truth and that it's in you, that it's not separate from you. So it's time for us to all get uh, real. And my prayer is that Yahweh will continue to have mercy upon us because he has been having mercy upon us with all of our ignorance that we go through, that he takes us through. But being conscious of why uh, he allows us to partake in that is to, so that we can see the spots and blemishes and get rid of them and be washed and made clean. Consciousness is the key. He brought, he told uh, uh, Abraham that he brought him from the land of Ur so that he can inherit the land that he had promised him. He brought us up out of the world so that we may inherit the land that Yahweh promised unto us. Are we going to inherit it or are we not? If you're heirs, are you going to take, to partake? Are you going to receive your inheritance or are you going to neglect it? These are the questions that we have to ask. These are the things we have to stop to examine. So I hope something has been said and I pray and I pray for the sons every day that we um, will partake of that that Yahweh has made us suitable for, that he will continue to make us suitable to receive of this revelation or to be partakers of this that he has promised us. So I thank you and I'll say hallelujah.
Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Coley. Our final speaker for tonight, Glesher, will be the Dean of the Meridian School, Dr. Carl Boston. Dr. Boston. Uh, good evening, everyone. I've, uh, <clears throat> I've enjoyed everything that has been expressed uh, this evening. And uh, I especially uh, was happy and glad to hear Nick. I haven't heard her in a while. And I'm thankful to Yahweh and grateful that he uh, has elevated her conscience, her understanding to the height that she is and to all of my children that have come up under, uh, into Yahweh under this school and this teaching. And I'm very proud of it. And I want you all to continue to pay attention to details and to examine, as was said, everything that is said to make sure that it's without spot and without blemish. I'm not gonna be here uh, long, but I just wanna give you a couple of things that uh, came to my attention while we were reading the scripture lesson that we could use down the line if we have to uh, have to uh, uh, pick up our arms and go to war. Uh, this one thing I want uh, the fifth verse in the sixty third chapter of Isaiah. Uh, it's a little different than how it reads in the Holy Name Bible, but this is more perfect uh, here in the King James. It says, and I looked, and there was none to help. And I wondered, that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it upheld me. See? So, if, if his own arm brought down salvation to him, to him where? We are Yahweh manifesting in a physical body unconscious of that reality. Or at least he was unconscious of it. There was no other source of substance that he had no other way to do this but to come down and become all these things himself. And then to turn around and reconcile him back to himself, having accomplished what he set out to do. And that was to glorify and honor himself with everything and by everything that he has made, including us. And the other scripture that I wanted to give to uh, read, brother, is the 16th verse. Because uh, we have recently got into this, in uh, reference to his name. It says, Doubtless thou art our father. Though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not, Thou art Yahweh, art our Father. Thou, o Yahweh, art our Father and our Redeemer. And this is the kicker right here. Thy name is from everlasting. So Yahweh named him again when we revealed it to Moses. His name has always been that. And it will always be that. It's not going to change to something else. So I'm just putting some of these things out there so you have something to fight with uh, in case you have to encounter this kind of thing again. You have the scriptures to use to go to battle with. Uh, but I don't have much to say, folks. I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, the thing that was spoken. I'm happy and glad to see the growth. Uh, like, like Paul said, I planted a pile of water, but it is Yahweh that gives the increase. I can't make you understand nothing. I can't give you no revelations. I can't reveal nothing to you. That have to come from within. That have to be Yahweh in you. And as we continue to go over these things over and over again and keep repeating them, see, it is Yahweh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasures. That's what's going on. And as the Spirit uh, brought out there, you understand, that why have you made us to hear Yahweh? Why have you made us to go away from your, you understand? See, he's the cause and the effect of these things. You have to send us away in order to draw us back. <laughs> See? <laughs> but so, but anyway, uh, I don't have much to say tonight, folks. I'm just thankful to be here, to be a part of this, and uh, happy to see all you all and to know that you are wide awake 
from your understanding and receiving the truth as it really is and actually exists. And that's what I'm the most proud of because you didn't receive it as coming from a man, but as coming from Yahweh. That made me very proud. And I hope you continue to know and understand that these things are coming from Yahweh right within you. That's where the revelations come from. So keep up the fight. You see, keep up the faith. Don't go down, but if you do go down, understand that while you're there, you're there to learn something that you didn't know before. Paul said it like this. He said, I have learned that in whatever state I'm in, that we have to be content. Knowing that he that put me there is the same one that has to raise me up. See, so Israel had to go down to learn of Yahweh, and they came up with a knowledge of him. So we go down to learn of Yahweh too. And he fills us with his knowledge and with his understanding so that we can know who we are and where we come from. So I'm going to close it there. I, 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 I uh, thank Yahweh for all of you. And I appreciate uh, all those who get on these calls to try to know and understand something about our father, because that's what it's all about. And don't be afraid about the things that are coming up. Don't let those things throw you. This world is over with. As I've been saying for years now, this country will cease from being a nation. All nations will cease to be. Chaos will be ruling the whole entire world. That's coming up quickly. And so you have to have the faith of the Messiah in order to stand and to withstand these things and not get caught up in it or be so tore up and worried and crying about it. You understand? But know that we're going home. We're going to our real home. We're going back to pure spirit, where we come from. And then we'll start all over again. Uh, to be whatever we will to be. So I hope you got something out of this class tonight. And I thank you. May y'all continue to keep it best of all. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Thank you for joining us tonight on Zoom and on YouTube. I'm going to ask before we conclude, are there any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? I'm going to give YouTube a chance to catch up with um, because they do lag a little bit. Any questions or comments from anybody in class tonight on Zoom? All right. Um, I did want to address um, the question that was asked last week about the fifth and sixth age, Yahweh showed me um, some things about it after the call. And so if I can get one of the readers to get Genesis, the first chapter. And before we read it, I'm going to um, try to read the question one more time. I think it was the same question, if I'm not mistaken, but um, I want to... Um, give what Yahweh gave me um, on it. So let's see, the question was, where is it? Let me find the question again, here we go. Nope, that's not the question. Let me see. It was about the fifth and sixth age. Um, I don't wanna misquote her question or ask it wrong, let me see. Mm -mm -mm. Sandy, I know you're on YouTube. Sandy, if you could type your question one more time for me, if I can read it, because I'm looking for it through my phone. It might be quicker for you to just to type it. Um, let's see, I think I got it. No, that's not it. So it's about the fifth and sixth age, um, whether or not we'll be um, still learning in the fifth and sixth age, and is that when will receive, um, I guess, I think it was, is that when we receive our glorified body? I believe the question was. I might know how to type it for me real quick. Anyway, so I'll go into what um, Yahweh showed me about it and may just answer the question without me having to ask it, but I wanted you guys to see the question too, to have a better understanding of um, what Yahweh showed me about it. I did not see it, and I'm going to see it after I get off the phone. I can't find it on this phone to save my life. All right, anyway. Um, so if you can read Genesis, the first chapter, I'm going to pull up the Agent Dispensation chart. 
So Sorry. what Yahweh showed me, you know how, uh, hold on just a second, start the first verse, over. hold on just a second. So you know how Yahweh really does operate um, by a pattern, his divine pattern. And so there are seven steps in this tabernacle pattern, just like there are seven ages and seven dispensations. Um, there are seven days of the creation, so forth and so on, seven steps in the migratory pattern and things like that. And so Yahweh actually answered the question for me about the seven days of creation because it all follows the same pattern. Um, and so hopefully Yahweh will allow me to um, answer it the way that he showed it to me. So the question is, during the fifth and sixth ages, what will, be, what will we be doing? So that's what um, the question was. Thank you, Sandy. So let's start um, in the, on the first chapter of Genesis, first verse, and hopefully he'll let me bring it out real quick. Because um, I said I was going to answer it um, at the end of last night. Go ahead. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light and there was light. And Elohim saw the light that it was good. And Elohim divided between the light and between the darkness. And Elohim called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Okay, and oh, El so we're gonna break down each day. So um, I'm gonna get you to pause after each day. And sometimes in between some of those. But so he said he divided the light from the darkness. That was the first day. So the first day should correspond to the first age. He divided the light from the darkness. Um, and the day he called the light he called day and the darkness he called night. Now, let me see if I can make this bigger. Uh oh. And the evening the morning was the first day. So you have the light being separated from the darkness, and you have the angelic host ending with, uh, well, not ending, um, you had Satan being cast out, and that's when the kingdom was brought unto the angelic host, um, and that, that was all done in the realm of eternity. That's why you don't have a dispensation starting in the first age, because the dispensation kind of starts, it starts with time, and the first dispensation actually started from after the fall of Adam, um, and so there's no time here, and so they are in the day of eternity. All this is operating within Yahweh. But so you, he divided the light from the darkness. And Satan was cast out into outer darkness or he was cast to the earth. And that began the physical. He was sent out or cast out into the unfinished physical creation. And so that's the first day. Start with the second day for me. And Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so. And Elohim called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. Uh, and so when Yahweh on the second day you had, he divided the waters. Now, the second age is the antediluvian age. Um, it's called the age of consciousness. In this age, you had the first and second dispensation with Adam um, being cast out of the garden or typifying heaven. And then you had it ending with the flood where the floodgates from heaven above and the floodgates from beneath um, were opened up. And that ended the age. So, of course, on the second day, you're going to have Yahweh separating or dividing the waters from above from the waters beneath and heaven um, or the firmament in the midst which typifies heaven. Okay, that was the second day, which corresponds to the second age. Let's go through the third day. And Elohim said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And Elohim called the dry portion earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, 
Let the earth bring forth tender grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth tender grass, herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And Elohim mm -hmm. saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Paul. Oh. So the third day has, has to correspond to the third age. And so you had two, a double operation the third day. Now you had the waters being abated off of the earth and a dry land appeared. That's what happened at the end of this age, in the end of the second age, beginning of the third age, when Noah's, with Noah's ark, you had the water abating off of the earth and the dry land appeared and Noah sent out the raven first. Then he sent out the dove the first time the dove came back and finding rest waited seven days, sent her out again, so forth and so on. So you have the waters abating off of the earth and the dry land appearing in the third age. But then you also had the tree yielding seed and the fruit, the seed of vegetation went on into fruition. So you have the seed of Abraham also going on into fruition here too. So you have the promise of Abraham, with Abraham's seed, and all of those things transpiring in the third age to match the third day of creation. All right, fourth day. And Elohim said, let the light in the firmament of the heavens separate the day from the night, and they will be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And Elohim made to appear two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And Elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven to line the earth and to rule by day and by night and to separate between light and between darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So now in the fourth age, we talk about the light. We know that the sun represents Yahshua the Messiah. So at the end or the beginning of the fourth age into the third age, you have the death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and that point of the Holy Spirit or Pentecost is the beginning of this fourth age. And so it's a spiritual kingdom on earth or the present kingdom age in the fourth age. And so the fourth day talks about the light to rule by day and the moon, the, the sun to rule by day, the, the moon to rule by night. And the moon represents the law. Now, in the fourth age or the present kingdom age, you have the new covenant or the new testament or the new law that was poured out on the day of Pentecost. And that's what governs the man. And then you also have the Holy Spirit in the man that also rules the man as well. And so that's in the fourth age or on the fourth day. Let's get the fifth day. And Elohim said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures and birds that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heavens. And Elohim created great sea monsters and every living creature that swarms with which the waters swarmed after their kind and every winged bird after his kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim blessed them saying, be fruitful and increase and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply in the earth and the evening and the morning or the fifth day. Now the birds represent the angels. And so in the fifth age, so, so after the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah, that's when we, our immortal spirit will receive the immortal body. And so then also you have here, you have Isaiah 65th chapter and 66th chapter, and it talks about those animals. Um, and it, those animals were representations about the new earth state. It talks about that. And so, of course, on the fifth day of creation, you're going to have those um, birds being brought forth and those creatures and the things like that uh, representing those animals that he talked about or prophesied about in the new earth state. That's the fifth day and the fifth age. Let's get the sixth day. And Elohim said, let the earth bring forth 
the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after their kind, and it was so. And Elohim made the beasts of the earth after their kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the ground after their kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his image. In the image of Elohim created he him, male and female created he them. He him. Pause. And Pause for just a second. So then now, at the end of this thing, or in the sixth age, or at the end of the fifth age, once after the universal revelation of Yahshua Messiah and we received our immortal, immortal glorified body, then all things are subdued unto the sun. The man being put in on the sixth day or being uh, formed in the, on the sixth day with the woman within him is talking about the body of Yahweh Elohim or Yahshua the Messiah all being in that one body because the woman was in the man at that time and he was given dominion or rule over everything. And so all things will be subdued unto the sun. And then the sun will then turn around and give it back over to the father in which Yahweh will be all in all and go back into his rest, which is the seventh age. And so that's how the days, and so the seventh day he rested. So that's how the days of creation actually correlate with the seven ages and dispensations. I hope that answers your question, Miss Sandy. I know it was answered last um, Friday, but I, Yahweh had given me this right after the call on how it actually matches the seven days of creation um, and correlate seven days of creation with the seven um, ages. Um, and I didn't even talk about the seven dispensations, how it correlates with that, but I hope that kind of helps answer the question. Um, but that's what I had on that. It was so many things that were brought out tonight that I was, you know, I have a lot to go chew on or whatever. The scripture lesson within itself was a lot um, and of course, in the 14th verse, I think it was, yeah, I'll skip and dance around that one. Um, he talks, well, before that, um, the, I'm going to start at the 11th verse. No, oh, goodness gracious. Hmm. A first. And for he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. Who was their savior? Yahweh was their savior. Hmm. Yahweh was their savior in all of their affliction. He also was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. This scripture, this, this, this whole chapter is talking about Yahshua, the son of Nun. He is the one. He's the one that came from Edom with dyed garments from Bozra. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the great. That was talking about Yahshua, the son of Nun which was Yahweh manifested in a body. He was their savior in all their affliction. He was also afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and they vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. Who do you think you're fighting against? Oh, I'm, I'm going to be on the time. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? Now they're looking for Yahweh now. He looking for, they're looking for him now. Now, he did all. He saved them over and over and over. He was afflicted. When they were afflicted, he continuously saved them, had mercy on them, had pity on them. And they continuously rebelled against him and vexed his Holy Spirit. And so he became an enemy unto them and fought against them. Then they wanted to cry out. Where is he that brought, up, brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? That led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name. Where is Yahweh? 
that led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble. As a beast goeth down into the valley, the spirit of Yahweh caused him to rest. So didst thou lead thy people. This is why. This is why he did all the things that he did. This is why, right here. So didst thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Yahweh will get the glory no matter what. This is what all this was for, for his name's sake. So his name so him, he himself can get the glory for all that he has done. That's why he calls them to go through all the things, but they, that's why he hardened them up. So when he comes in and cleans them up, he will be the one to get the glory. That's why he did all these things. Look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is the zeal and the strength, the sounding of thy vows and of thy mercies toward me? Are they restrained? Yahweh, are you keeping it back from me now? <laughs> That's the reason why he did it, for his name's sake, so he can get the glory. But it was it was beautiful time. I really appreciate everybody's testimony um, and everybody's participation. Uh, let me see if we have any questions from YouTube. I shall know they be preaching. Kim and Wendy, and, uh, y'all be preaching on YouTube. Y'all need to join us on Zoom. And get on the floor and have a give a testimony. Uh, if you don't have the Zoom information, email us at idmrmeridianms at gmail dot com. I'll show send it to you. All right. Are there any other questions or comments before we conclude? All right. One um, quick announcement: the times and everything are the same for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And Saturday, um, well, actually, no, Thursday, we will not have basic foundation class on Thursdays anymore. We're actually, I'll be announcing the the new day, um, probably tomorrow, once I tally up all of the um, remarks that we got, it's going to be either Monday or Tuesday, so we can actually do the learning live with Janine and the crew on Thursday. Also, um, the youth session has gone to every other Saturday since the kids are back in school now. But I'm excited to announce that we finally have a day and a time for our special Zoom class on the chart. And so Sunday, this coming Sunday, September the 13th, um, starting at 6.30 Central Time, 7.30 Eastern Time, which is 4.30 Pacific Time, we'll start um, a Zoom class session on the charts. We'll be going through the charts. So the first session will be going through the 40-plate chart, explaining the details of the 40-plate charts and running them and things like that so we can get a more profound understanding of the chart and the vision that was put on the chart. And the second session will be the following Sunday where we'll go through the other charts as far as the ages and dispensations chart, the Daniel chart, the Moses chart. So we'll be going through the different charts and showing all the things on the chart. Um, our speaker for, well, one of our presenters for Sunday's lecture will be um, Dr. David Underwood from Lansing, Michigan. He will be one of the presenters for um, the 40-plate chart class session. Um, and then I think Dr. Terry Welsh may be able to do some things on Sunday, depending on how long it takes for the 40 plate chart. But I know he will be one of the presenters on next Sunday with the ages and dispensation um, charts as well. So um, Shima, you have a question? No, that was an accident, sorry. Oh, okay, no problem. All right. All right. Well, if there is nothing else, we're going to conclude with the doxology. If anybody has any questions, concerns, or comments, you can email us at IDMR Meridian, M E R I D I A N M S, at gmail.com. Don't forget the MS at the end of it, which stands for Mississippi. So IDMR Meridian MS at gmail.com. You can email us um, there if you have any questions, concerns, or comments. All right. So we're going to conclude with the doxology. The doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and ever. Let everyone say hallelujah. 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 All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me stop the stream.
Good night, y'all. Love y'all. Good night. Love you too. Sorry, you're back. Bye.